Right from the get-go in season one, our fresh-faced friends were on to the creatures they knew as Demogorgons. Named from their knowledge of creatures from Dungeons and Dragons, they were able to put together its stats, including very early that it was attracted to blood. Barb cut her finger, Demogorgon. They make Jonathan cut his own hand, Demogorgon. Eleven makes lab agents bleed from their eyeballs. Demo- Okay, you get it, you get it. So, what made it go after Will in the first place? When we see him being chased, he doesn't seem to be bleeding at all. Sure, he fell off his bike, but he looks physically okay. Are Demogorgons just into general oopsies? Am I missing something? While we're re-engaging with those season one member berries, did you recall that the Byers family actually had a dog? Yeah, us neither. Because other than being there to bark at a shed, which eventually leads Joyce and Hopper on their search for Will, we don't really see him again later on. We see the family again throughout the seasons and no sign of that shaggy hero. How does she know about the references? Oh no, you talked about the record. It wasn't me. Hello, I can hear you. So let's jump to season three. Dustin, Robin, and Steve work to decode a secret Russian message, and while they manage to do it successfully, they kind of hit a wall after a point. Steve, who in season three really went from dumb handsome jerk to serious MacGyver, was able to recognize the song from the mall horsey ride. Cool, but wasn't the Russian broadcast like way underground? How did it end up being so clear? Dude, this is radio from the 80s. Come to think of it, how in Sam Hill did all these Russians manage to make it into a small town like Hawkins undetected? There are a lot of them down there. No one is eating at the restaurants or going to the town fair, not to mention building an expansive underground base under the main mall with a big honkin' drill in it. Like the town of Hawkins must at least have a Russian quarter in it at this point, right? So Will really gets the short end of the Stranger Things stick in general. This much we know. Season one, the town was really worried about him and mourned him publicly. Then, in the second season, all of a sudden he's called Zombie Boy and kind of looked at as this weirdo. Let's not forget there was a fake body double in the quarry. Any explanation on that one? Guys, that's some Mission Impossible level work and Hopper just filed it under, oh, that's some weird stuffing. Also in the category of random unloved bodies strewn throughout the Hawkins Township are all the patients and doctors lying dead at Hawkins Memorial Hospital. The season three fight with the baby mind flare was epic, but did they just stop visiting hours altogether? You figure in a town that small, that many suspicious death investigations might, you know, pause the 4th of July celebrations? Oh no, but not in this good old fashioned town. It's Independence Day, baby. No extra dimensional creepers stopping that. Let's light up some cigars and let them know, boys. Welcome to Earth. So the end of season three featured a big showdown at the Starcourt Mall, which resulted in it not exactly looking, you know, like J.C. Penny was still open. The ensuing raging fire helped cover up the terrible beasties and Russians from the public, but how did the fire take down the mall? I mean, they just shot some teensy fireworks at the Mind Flare. I mean, Hopper and Joyce blew up the Russian drill, but again, that's miles underground. Wouldn't someone have the job of moving the giant dead Mind Flare corpse? Not one firefighter kind of question that? This one is a technicality for sure, but let's face it, it. Eleven's weird. In the second episode, we see her ask Mike, what is a friend? Which leads to a lovely explanation by the gang, including the classic line, Friends don't lie. Earlier though, in episode two, Mike had told her that his walkie was used to talk with his friends. Also in a flashback in episode six, people are surrounding her and Dr. Brenner tries to calm her saying, they are all your friends. We don't know what kind of trauma she went through. So look, we'll let this one slide. But it seems like at this point, she would have grasped the concept. Back to season one. Okay, let me get this straight. Demogorgon and Eleven get into a scrap, which tears a gate between our world and the upside down. Then here on the right side up, she's got to close the gate to stop it, right? That's the plan, cool. Except there's a bunch of gates, right? The big Demogorgon tore through Joyce's wall. Then it climbed out of trees and also a middle school wall in the finale. <laughs> That's a bunch of gates. And there's a bunch of other Demogorgons. All right, all right. Again, perhaps a nitpick, but when we were all served a full-sized member berry shake in the Starcourt Mall food court, it was hard not to notice the spending spree. Eleven and Max decided to go shopping, and given the humble nature of Eleven and Hopper's place, we couldn't help but think, where'd they get all the bills for them threads? Seriously, they're doing photo shoots, belts, berets. Is Hopper cool on all this, or has she just been saving her allowance? 